is delicious. Ciao, I'm Enzo. I'm Celia. This is a Piazza Talk, a channel about our life in Lucca. And in the Tuscan Hills. Please hit the subscribe button. Grazie. Ciao a tutti. I think it's time that we go inside and cook something. Cook some lunch? Yes, I'm hungry. Me too. So what are we having today? Today we got to have uh, spaghetti alla Nerano. Which is a sort of upmarket pasta courgette? Mm, yes, uh, because uh, you use also a beautiful cheese, a provolone. And it comes from the south of Italy? Yes, it comes from uh, a place called uh, Nerano, that uh, is uh, on the other side of uh, Sorrento, not far from the Amalfi coast. So I've noticed uh, a lot of people say it comes from the Amalfi Coast. Do you think that they think that's more popular? Upsis. Well, I don't know, but we can say that it's uh, the Amalfi but that's not the Amalfi Coast because it's a bit towards uh, Salerno. So anyway, it's very close. <laughs> but poor Nerano. Is it pretty mm. Nerano? Uh, every place is very beautiful there. It's incredibly beautiful. It's got a beautiful coast and um, a beautiful uh, uh, crystal clear sea. It's wonderful. <laughs> anyway, let's go and uh, cook it. Okay, let's go inside. Spaghetti al Nerano was created about 70 years ago by Donna Rosa, owner of Ristorante Maria Grazia in Nerano. Spaghetti al Nerano featured in Stanley Tucci's In Search of Italy. Which version do you prefer? He's or mine. And can you spot the difference? To cook this wonderful dish, we need courgettes. We need them I mean, in three or four uh, courgettes, medium size. We need uh, extra virgin olive oil, some uh, fine oil, good quality fine oil. I got some flour, but probably peanut or good quality oil. Then uh, pepper that we go to grind. Lots of basil leaves come from a plant outside. Garlic. We need the uh, pasta. I use pasta di Gragnano, uh, bronze dye. So it is rather porous surface and which develops the starch we need for the recipe. Protein. 14%. I'm a bit uh, obsessed about this thing, but we want good quality pasta. And don't forget, if you haven't seen our video on how to buy um, packet pasta, we'll link it in the description box below and in the a card, card above. above. Yes. And cheese. We need provolone. If you have the possibility to get a provolone del Monaco, would be great but uh, it is difficult to get in Italy as well outside the area of uh, Sorrento and the Malfi. And basically it's a provolone that comes from there and yeah. isn't it that then um, people who made provolone went up to the north of Italy? Or well there's this story that uh, somebody who made this uh, wonderful provolone long long time ago moved to the north of Italy because he didn't have enough, he couldn't get enough milk. So in the north of it, there are more cows. But they are all the manufacturer. But probably Monaco is a, a specific, uh, wonderful cheese of the place there. If you can get it on the internet or whatever, it's fine. I couldn't get it, so I got provolone, which is perfectly fine, and uh, parmigiano. But the thing is, you want a provolone that's not too uh, stagionato, that's not too old. No, you don't want too mature because it gets too hot and then we get the opposite uh, effect in your dish, overwhelms the taste of the courgettes. I think we got everything. We need our tools. We need uh, a pan to fry the courgettes. We need a dish with kitchen paper to, to dry the courgettes, remove the excess soil. And we also need uh, this beautiful uh, Schiumarola 
and we need a grater. And pans. In the meantime, I put some water to boil here with salt. The first thing to do is to cut the courgette. I remove the top at the bottom of the courgette. And I cut the courgette in rings, more or less with the same thickness. And you can use your fingers mm. like you are as a guide, no? Yes, yes, I just do it this way with the fingers slightly going backwards here. Now the crocetto zucchini, if you prefer the name, are ready and we can proceed to the next step. Now I'm going to pour the oil in this pan. We need quite a bit of oil because uh, we want to uh, fry the zucchini properly. So that's why we need uh, um, good fine oil. Some people use uh, extra virgin olive oil to fry that, but in my view, it is a bit of a waste of money. And now we want to uh, reach the right uh, frying temperature, which is in uh, Celsius is uh, 160, 160, 170, in Fahrenheit uh, around 320-330 degrees. And also I have uh, put a candle low heat. I don't want to get a candle huge heat coming into the oil. So I want that oil reaches the temperature slowly. I don't have the thermometer and now I'm going to teach you a couple of tricks uh, to find out when uh, the oil reaches the right uh, temperature. First trick. You need a toothpick, so I go to the surface of the oil, making sure that I don't burn myself. And you can see there are little bubbles around. Yes, I can see them. Okay, it means that the oil is ready. Second trick, I try with uh, the first courgette, just one. Okay, you can see that it's starting frying, so ready. So we can put the courgette inside. Now, don't put too many at the same time, otherwise the temperature of the oil goes down. Them. and when they get this piece of color, I start moving them. The pasta water is hot, so I'm going to turn it off because uh, we have to have it ready when we are uh, finished with the courgettes. So they're ready, so I'm going to remove this lot from the frying place and start with the next batch. Be careful not to splash hot oil. So actually one system will be that if you actually put it on this and then put them inside. So that's a good system, safer system. So this batch is ready, so I'm going to shake off some of the oil, okay. Ready for another batch. And uh, this is the last batch we finish it. And now we go to grate the cheese. Let's start with the provolone. We don't want it too fine. And now the parmigiano. Okay, the wood is only hot. We want to bring it to the boil again. And the water is boiling. You can see that I didn't fill the water, the, the, the pan with lots of water because we want more starch. So I normally want to use less water than you normally use for the pasta. Two portions for me and you. And I want to undercook the pasta by one minute at least. I need to garlic close, so I'm going to squash them. Okay. 
and I'm going to fry them with the, the skin. Olive oil, cover the pot with that. Okay, now the garlic is sizzling, and I'm going to add the zucchini or courgette if you like. So now I transfer the flavor of zucchini into the olive oil. And at this point you really do need extra virgin olive oil. Yes, you need extra virgin olive oil. And now I'm going to use some of the pasta water with the starch with the crochet. So now the we have to prepare the base for the emulsion. And I'm also adding some of the Basil that I also tap with hands, never use it a ah, knife or something. The scent is wonderful. Now I turn off the flame here because I'm going to start the emulsion. So, what do I do? I add some cheese here, a bit more pasta water and I start mixing I'm adding more cheese the cheese a little by little don't do it all together or just get lumps of cheese we want to create an emulsion which in Italian is called a cremina yes it's a funny name could we add of this, more water, and I keep stirring. And you can see that the color is now moving to the emulsion, becoming green. That we give the final wonderful color to the sauce. Okay, finished. Now there are lots of different recipes, aren't there? And I believe some people even add butter i don't know this is a traditional way i mean butter was not something they would use in naples i mean all the time in, uh, in the past i think this makes a much more mediterranean dish and after all it's quite rich already and uh, do you do a cremino on the flame or off the flame i try to keep out of the flame as much as i can the pasta is ready it's undercooked by one minute so turn it off and we might like to do garlic before serving but you're more likely to get lumps if you add the flame on. Uh, yes, but you don't want lumps of cheese. Look, you can see it's really working pretty well there. Okay, and now I said rather quickly, almost furiously. And you can see that the Cremina, the emulsion, is slowly, slowly absorbed by the pasta. So, and I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's actually all shiny. Final touch, I'm going to use some more basil, fresh basil. Okay, we actually don't need to turn the heat on again because it seems that it's perfectly absorbed by the, by the pasta. So we can serve it and eat it. And we want to put some ground pepper on the top. It's enough, it depends how much pepper you like. For me, this is plenty. I think you're doing this on purpose, making me always eat spaghetti on <laughs> camera. <laughs> well, next time we can change the <laughs> pasta. Mm. That is delicious. And it doesn't feel heavy, it feels, even though it's um, quite rich, it's fried and it's got cheese. It's, this is a, a 
perfect vegetarian dinner party dish. Are you going to join me now? Uh, yes, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you meditating by yeah, the river? I was wondering where they go to. The where the group gone to? Look at that. Well, it's, a, <laughs> it's a very humid Sunday afternoon, and so we decided to come for a walk by the the Nima, the Arriba. torrent in Bani di Luca, and. Uh, uh, they're all out river trekking today. Um, not something I personally am courageous enough to do because I hate cold water. But um, they all tell me they're absolutely boiling in their outfit. <laughs> and that noise is the army bridge that you have to cross to get here, which is quite frightening. <laughs> anyway, you put your finger in the water and the water is not that cold. No, it's actually not unbearable but I won't go in unless it's over 30 degrees so forget it for me. <laughs> but um, it's very beautiful and I imagine um, it's actually a rather a fun thing to do. I'm not yeah. sure I have the courage. I'm too yeah. old. <laughs> the beautiful thing about Banyuluka, there's so much uh, to explore. I mean, we've never been to this place uh, before, maybe not been for a long time. I don't remember this place before. Do you? Um, this particular bit, I mean, we often come along the Lima, but this particular entrance, no. And I've never driven over the army bridge. It's freaky enough. <laughs> but they're all going in the water now, so we see them all. They look rather like ninja and turtles going down with these kind of, I don't know what they're, they're called, they're like um, blow up kayaks uh, that they're going in. Uh, it's like a soft uh, kayak, I think. Yeah, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is river trekking or kayaking. They call it pack rafting. Oh, pack rafting, is that what it yeah. is? That's early, that's early in the And there are actually uh, lots of points in the river where you can do activities, even freshwater diving, but there are activities in this river for everybody. And it's really, it's really lovely to see people enjoying this beautiful river. Or torrent, I should say. Ponte Militare, Military Bridge. So this is the bridge that was making all the noise. And I must say, um, it looked rather fun, but uh, I have a ruined vertebrae, so I don't think I dare try it. But maybe you will. Yeah, I'm quite excited. Well, I should try it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Time for uh, more tranquil things, I think. If you enjoy our videos, please leave a like and subscribe. It helps us enormously with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much.